I can't stand when the consumer doesn't get to know what is in their food. And there are certain things like excitotoxins can be added into food and it never has to be disclosed on a label. So what I wanted to do is in this video describe what to look for, what sort of mimics or is similar to MSG, right? Because I'm not saying MSG is the worst thing in the world, okay? The research really is conflicting, but I know that a lot of people try to avoid MSG, and if they saw MSG on a label, they would say, oh, I'm not going to buy that, and that's absolutely your prerogative, okay? I personally don't like to consume MSG. I feel weird when I consume it. Maybe that's just me, but bottom line is that there are other things in foods that are acting upon the same pathway that have different names. So I'm gonna explain what they are, but I also wanna explain the mechanism and what's happening with an excitatory neurotoxin. Hey, after this video, I want you to check out Thrive Market. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So if you're watching what you're eating, you're looking for better for you category foods, doesn't matter if you're vegan or paleo or keto, any of that, they have it all. So you go there, you select what diet category you wanna eat from and you just eat all kinds of different food. It's amazing. Then food just gets delivered to your doorstep. It's an online membership-based grocery store. So it ends up saving you money because you're not having to go to the grocery store. It's super convenient. And there is a 25% off discount link off your first order down below. Plus you get a free gift. So Thrive Market's a big sponsor in this channel. They have been for years. So a big thank you to them and make sure you check them out after this video. So what excitotoxins are, are non-essential amino acids that essentially stimulate our taste buds. Okay, they stimulate our taste buds giving that umami feel, right? Well, when you have that overstimulation of the taste buds, it can affect basically your neurons. It can affect your brain chemistry a little bit. Now, let's put that aside for one second and let's just talk about hyperpalatability. Hyperpalatability as a blanket thing is not good because it's triggering you to eat more. Okay, that's the idea behind these things. They make food taste better, they enhance the taste, but they also, in the world of processed foods, encourage you to just eat more. And we know that that is ultimately what they're after, right? Just want you to eat more of these foods. That they, anyway, let's just not go down that rabbit hole. Here's what's happening inside your body with them. When you consume these excitotoxins, it can overstimulate the neurons in our brain. So it, it stimulates what is called N-methyldeaspartate, NMDA. Okay, and this, ultimately what is happening is you're having this massive influx of calcium coming into a neuron, okay? This influx of calcium is gonna trigger what's called a depolarization, and that triggers an action potential. So an action potential is the beginning of a nerve signal to do something, but an excitotoxin is basically stimulating a nerve response or a neuron response and an action potential for, well, lack of a better term, nothing. It's like undesired, you're not asking it. So the brain is like kind of having these like miniature fireworks, if I could give it an analogy. The brain's just kind of pop, 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 pop when you're having this hyper sweet or hyper palatable food with extra umami because these excitotoxins. Now, additionally, when you have this process happen, you also have nitric oxide synthase, which is produced, okay? Triggering more nitric oxide, which can be a free radical and can trigger some additional damage there too. So we have to be careful there. So what are we looking for? Well, obviously glutamate, like monosodium glutamate. But another one, simple natural flavors, I know that's no blanket to say, but it's scary because natural flavors you could have 150, literally, what are called incidental additives, which means that it could be any one of 150 things that are thrown in and still just follow under the blanket term natural flavors. Okay, so that means that excitotoxins can be added in, they can be additives, but they just fall under the blanket category of natural flavors. That being said, there's some natural flavors that are perfectly fine, that are fine, totally good but they fall under the same blanket category as ones that are also terrible. Okay, yeast extract is another one you really wanna watch out for. Now, yeast extract will make its way into foods that are even decent foods otherwise, right? It's not a terrible thing for you metabolically, but yeast extract is still one of these hyperpalatable things, triggering that umami effect, being an excitotoxin, triggering the brain in that response. Okay, now, additionally, things like sodium caseinate, which fortunately we don't see as much now, but you'll see that in a lot of refrigerated foods, like perishable foods. Again, it's there just to add as an additional umami factor. Autolyzed protein. This one frustrates me because some people look at that and say, oh, it's additional protein that's added in. It's fortified. No, it is a protein. It is an amino, a glutamate. It is autolyzed protein and it is still having that same effect on your taste buds and that same effect as an excitatory neurotoxin. Now, additionally, I'm gonna jump over and talk about something that isn't necessarily made in a lab or isn't a chemical. Okay, 
demoic acid, which is in shellfish, is also an excitotoxin. It doesn't mean that you can never eat shellfish. I recommend it. It's a tremendous protein source. But my point in saying that is that it's not all this like agenda to create terrible things that are excitotoxins. They're naturally occurring too, but they have an effect on how we eat and what we want to consume. Okay? So we're looking at the big picture here. Now, when we look at the research, there are quite a few bodies of evidence that show in like petri dish studies, when you're looking at the brain, you're looking at brain cultures, these kinds of excitotoxins can trigger potentially even cell death. Okay, but that is not an accurate comparison. We cannot say, oh, in a, in a petri dish, the brain cells die. So that means when we consume this, our brain cells are gonna die. No, we have a blood brain barrier that protects us. Okay, but we just don't know the limitations. Okay, sometimes the blood brain barrier will protect us from certain size proteins and things like that. And we have regions of the hypothalamus that have a smaller, weaker blood brain barrier. It's not as robust. So we could potentially have these things that can pass through and then get into areas like the suprachiasmatic nucleus and potentially affect circadian rhythm and all of that. So when we look at the big picture, Excitotoxins are something that we should really avoid. I'm gonna recap again. We have autolyzed protein, we have monosodium glutamate, we have yeast extract, we have natural flavors, we have sodium casinate, we have domoic acid, and then of course we have the more blanket one, aspartame, that we should probably be paying attention to a little bit as well. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow. Sorry about the leaf blower, bye.